Damn, what time is it? I think I overslept. Man, I had the craziest dream. I had a dream that we had bought a team and moved to Vancouver. Why Vancouver? Anyway, we even had a walk off with Kyle Tucker, Scooter Jeanette, and even Tim Beckham were our stars. And we even tried to sign Mark Trumbo. And man, I mean, that was crazy. I mean, nobody was at the games. I mean, the games were practically empty. And we started out five and 20. Just crazy. I don't know what happened there, but wait, wait, what time is it? Oh, we, hey, we're gonna be late. We gotta go sign these papers, finalize this move. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the New Orleans Lion Kings franchise here on MLB The Show 20. Now, if you did just view the first four episodes of the new of the Vancouver Whalers franchise, I did decide to move them. I think it was early enough in the series to move them, and it is it was all a dream. Now this is the real thing we are in new orleans the lion kings and we are just going to continue from our last franchise so all of the players remain the same and including yasiel puig who did get injured and he will actually play the first 25 games then he will go down to a ball now if you did not view those first four episodes the links will be in the description to go look at the first four make episodes of the making of this team all together if you want the backstory and we are just continuing that and we have the same exact lineup so just in case you don't want to go back and look at that this is our team it is comp is made up of a lot of free agents a lot of guys that teams didn't want it's an expansion franchise so the houston astros are no more their players have been sprinkled across the league their contracts became void and now they are on different teams so that brings us to this squad made up of like i said free agents guys that you know teams haven't signed yet looking at danny salazar uh jose curdy is uh actually on the astros in real life he decided to sign with us clay buckholtz um and then some other free agents here like tyler rogers i believe he was on the astros as well but some other guys that you know maybe are older we have a lot of age on this team to be honest and we're gonna be looking to make trades so we will be simming up to the point that we left off in the vancouver franchise and let's just see where we end up so last time we ended up 5 and 20 at about the 25 game mark so let's just see where this uh team does end up and it looks like we're kind of trending that way because we're 4 and 11 right now 4 and 13 and you can just see the injuries hopefully do not come in because like i said the only injury that we had in that first iteration was Yasiel Puig for the season. So he will be moving down to A-ball like I mentioned. And we just pretty much are the same, 6-19. and 19. So Yasiel Puig does go down to A-ball. He is 29. I believe he signed to a two-year deal too. So he will be back next year unless we trade him. But just let's just pick up from the last episode of that franchise. And we were at about game 25 and we were looking at the trade block. And a lot of guys in the comment section for you guys, you guys recommended David Bodie, and I kind of agree. Now in that franchise, he was at 80 overall and I think that was just the morale boost that he got. And I, I, he's not starting right now, so he is 76 overall. So that does correct a little bit because I was kind of puzzled by why he was 80 overall. I mean, he has not put together a full season of work to even get that overall. But this is pretty good. I think 76 is about right for him. He is 26 years old. He plays every position. So that's the that's a benefit of getting him. I think right now I'm going to, if I do get him, I'm going to trade for him and put him at shortstop because right now Tim Beckham is our shortstop. And you saw in the first couple games with Vancouver, that guy is terrible on defense. I love to hit with him, but he's terrible on defense. But we're going to have to give up some prospects. So let's look who we will have to give up. Alex McKenna, a B potential, really good outfield prospect. Now, I do have a little apprehension about giving him up. But I do feel a little bit better because we have Justin Thompson, who is also a similar guy. And I think that right now I liked the development of Justin Thompson better. And also, he's a subscri subscriber prospect. 
So then we'll have to give up Josh Rogers, who I'm not really worried about. He's only 59 overall. And then another throw-in guy, Austin Pruitt. And he will just be a throw-in guy who's 30 years old. And that will be enough to put us over the top to get David Bodie. And the Cubs will agree to this trade. And we will have a new third baseman slash shortstop. And welcome to the team, David Bodie. Now, another guy you guys told me I should probably go after. And it's a guy that... You know, I think still has a pretty bright future. He's one year younger than David Bodie, Clint Frazier. Now, he has not pulled put together a, I guess, one full season of work, but combined in his experience, he has over a season. And just looking at his numbers, you know, it's not overly impressive. He strikes out quite a bit. So I think that I can bring the best out of him. I think his best years are still yet to come. So let's see what we will have to give up for him. Now, I do make realistic trades, so a lot of these trades are going to be kind of, you know, I'm going to have to give up prospects to get good players. That's how it's going to be. Uh, Andrew Knizner, is that how you say it? Knizner, Knizner. I'm going to give him up. He is a B potential prospect, but Corey Lee is our top prospect at catcher, and he is 75 overall. That means that Knizner or whatever, however you say it, he's going to be blocked from getting to the MLB level and then uh Sino Perez is going to be the next guy he is younger but like I said a very low overall guy and we're gonna have time to rebuild our farm system a little bit so I'm not really too worried about giving up you know some decent prospects but he's 59 and he's got a long way to go to even compete so here's what the lineup will look like so I am gonna pl platoon Clint Frazier right now he is 70 overall with that morale boost a little bit so that will at least boost him up to 70 but I'm gonna platoon him he will bat in the six hole David Bodie will actually not platoon he will start and he will bat in the three hole so let's check out this new team in our first game of action in the AL West Oakland Athletics and they are doing decent I think they have a long season to go as well but we'll see and we are going to play our first game in New Orleans and I am using the old Texas Stadium I'm going to try it out for the first season and see how I like it but the good thing about this game is that you can rebrand after each season so even if I wanted to switch jerseys I could do that I could switch stadiums jerseys whatever I want so I'm going to just play it how I see it right now and see how it goes. I do see a couple of Texas Rangers logos in the stadium, but we'll have to see if I can tolerate that. So let's get to this game play. Here is Jose Acurdy on the mound for us. Matt Olson at the plate with two outs here in the first inning, and he will ground out. So we will get out of that first inning. No damage done. So let's see how our new look offense will do. We're gonna face Frankie Montas on the mound. He is two and one on the season in five starts. So let's get into the action. Here is Scooter Jeanette up with one out. We gave Kyle Tucker the day off, so Rajay Davis is hitting leadoff. He actually grounded out in his first at-bat. So here is David Bodie up to bat, his first ever at-bat with New Orleans, and he swings at a horrible pitch. A little bit of angst on that swing, and that's a 14-pitch inning. As now we move on to the second inning. Here is Chris Davis at the plate, and he gets a pitch to hit, and he will drive it deep. And that one is gone, 458 feet. That was a shot to center. And Oakland takes the one nothing lead. So this inning does continue. Here's Austin Allen at the plate, who comes up with the man on first. And we will get out of that second inning, but we do give up the first run of the game on a homer to Chris Davis. So let's move on to the bottom of the second. Here is Melky Cabrera, who comes up, and he gets the first hit of the game for New Orleans. And that is going to be a single here with one out. And that's going to bring up Clint Frazier, his first at bat with the squad. He gets a hanger up in the zone. I thought he was going to crush that one instead. It is a fly out to center. And that one will bring up Leonis Martin with two outs. And he just puts his bat out there on the outside pitch. And it does get over the outstretched glove of the first baseman. And that is going to be a single. So now guys on first and second with Tim Beckham at the plate. He turns on one, another pitch out of the zone we're swinging at. We're maybe a little bit of ang little bit of angst in this game, swinging at pitches we shouldn't be. I think we'll settle down as this game goes on. So now we move on to the third inning. Here's Jose Acurdy on the mound, and he will walk a batter with two outs as that brings up Matt Olson to the plate. The lefty hits one, two left center, and that one is gonna get all the way to the wall. And look at that animation. It does not let us play the ball off of the wall nicely. 
And look at this. Olsen's going to head for third, and he will slide in. And a runner will come across the plate. And that is going to be an RBI triple for Matt Olsen. And that's going to bring up Chris Davis, who already hit a homer in this game. And he is just going to pop out to Clint Frazier in right field. And now it's a 2-0 lead here for the Oakland Athletics. So that's going to bring up Scooter Jeanette here in the third inning. He's going to watch one over the plate, and that one was right in his zone. So now 3-2 count. Same location, and we make them pay. It is going to be a home run off of the bat of Scooter Jeanette. I love playing with Jeanette. It's very easy to swing with him. It's very easy to see the ball based on his stat, based on his stance. And he has some power to him, and he drives it to the right field, 403 feet. And that one will trim this lead to just one run. So that's going to bring up David Bodie, who's still looking for his first hit as a New Orleans Lion King. And that one will be a ground out to third. As now we move on to the top of the fourth. Here's Matt Chapman at the plate. And he will drive one deep, and that's a no-doubt home run. Man, Martin didn't even move. He knew that was gone in left field. And that one will be the seventh home run of the field of the uh of the season for Matt Chapman and that one will bring up two outs and we do eventually get out of this inning with the ground out as you move on to the middle of the fifth inning here with one out here is a walk and that one will get a guy on first base here at the top of the order Mateo goes the first up comes the next batter and it's going to be a hit to right field Clint Frazier with a horrible dive on that one bad timing and we come up throwing, but Mateo's got 92 speed, and he will make it all the way home. Four to one here for the Oakland Athletics, and that one will bring up Matt Olson, who's already got a hit in this one, an RBI, and here he hits one to the exact same spot just about, and that one will drop in, and that is going to be a five to one lead here in the fifth inning, and they are teeing off on Akurdi. And that's going to bring up Chris Davis. Already hit a home run in this one. He gets another hanger on the outside part of the plate. And he goes with the pitch. And that one will sneak over the wall. His sixth home run of the year. And wow, Chris Davis, two home runs in this game. It's 7-1 to one here. As now we are in a deep hole. And that's going to bring up David Bodie to start the next inning with one out. He gets a pitch to hit, and that one is driven to the warning track, and he will have his first hit of his career with the Lion Kings, and that is going to be a double here as we got a long way to go in this one, but that one will kind of give us a boost of confidence a little bit as the Oakland Athletics manager will come out, and he will pull the starter, and that brings in Mike Fires, and remember him, he is the whistleblower in the Astros uh fiasco and that's going to bring up Trumbo who drives one deep to right field and that one is going to be out of the outstretched glove of the right fielder and we will round third and head home with Bodie and he will have the speed to get there and that does give us another run seven to two here is Trumbo is going to be our power guy in the four hole throughout this year and that's going to bring up Melky Cabrera, who hits one to left center. Another run comes across the plate as Melky is going to stand up at second base. Three to seven now. We're chipping away slowly. As now that brings up the next batter. That's going to be Clint Frazier. Let's see if he can keep, keep the hit parade going. He gets an outside slider, and he's just a little bit too far ahead of that swing. And that's going to bring up Martin, who comes up. And he will pop out to right field. And they are going to get out of this inning. But we do get two runs in the set, sixth. So that's going to bring up Tim Beckham to start out the bottom of the seventh. He hits one to left center. And that one will make it all the way to the wall. And that is going to be a leadoff double here for Tim Beckham. Remember, in the last series, he had a 10-game hitting streak. So hopefully he can get hot. So that's going to bring up Garrett Stubbs, who's hitting in the nine hole. He's going to hit a little dribbler to the first baseman, and that's going to be an easy out there. But it does advance the runner to third base. So that's going to bring up Scooter Jeanette. Michael fires across the middle, and that is going to be hit up the middle. That is a rocket, a perfect swing on that one. Perfect liner, everything. And that is going to be an RBI once again for Scooter Jeanette. And the manager will bring in Liam Hendricks. 
And now he comes in to take Fire's place. And with two outs, David Bodie at the plate. Gets a pitch to hit, and it's a perfect swing once again. Right over the middle of the plate. That one is going to be gone 448 feet. Bodie has himself a debut, a leadoff, or not a leadoff, but he had a double earlier, and that one is a no doubt home run. And David Bodie, I'm gonna like playing with him, it looks like. And that's gonna bring up Mark Trumbo with two outs, and he's gonna hit a pop-up to center field. And that one is gonna bring us to the ninth inning. Brad Peacock comes in out of the bullpen to face Matt Olson, who drives one deep. And that one is going to be out of here. Another no doubt home run. That was in the upper deck, it looked like. And that's going to be his fifth home run of the season. And Peacock, now with two outs facing Steven Piscotti, will get him to strike out on the outside slider. And now we go into the ninth inning down by two. Man, I wish it was just a one-run game, but here comes Garrett Stubbs lead off this inning. He drives one deep to right field, and that one has carry, and it will make it all the way to the wall. And Stubbs has 71 speed, so he will make it to second base standing up. So now that brings up the next batter here, Rajay Davis. But we will kind of pinch hit him. We gave Cal Tucker the day off, but we will bring him in to pinch hit, and that one will bring in the lefty here from left field who is going to be a star in this series, I think. And he gets a pitch to hit over the middle of the plate, and he's going to hit one, two, right field. A perfect swing on that one. And now guys on the corners with Scooter Jeanette. He could be a hero. A walk-off wins it. Let's see what he does. He hits a pitch to center field, and that is going to be an easy can of corn. But let's see. Garrett Stubbs does have 71 speed. We will tag up, and he will slide it safe. So now an eight to seven game. See that home run does come back to bite us as we could have tied it up on that swing. So up comes David Bodie, who's already two for four in this game. He hits one to third base and they do try to turn two and he will beat that one out at first base. So now that brings up Mark Trumbo, one for three in this game. He hits one too short and Mateo can't field that one cleanly. He comes up throwing and it is gonna be a safe uh, runner at first base, an error on Mateo, and that brings up Cabrera, who also walks. So now, base is loaded, and Clint Frazier, the newcomer, will come to the plate, and the manager comes out and checks on uh, Yakim, and now in a 3-2 count, two outs. Clint Frazier hits just a chopper to third base, and that one will be the game, the comeback bid will be cut short and we come up that close and wow we come away with the loss but i like the potential i see out of this squad especially with david bodie hitting in the three hole now i think that gives us another element in this lineup now with scooter Jeanette now being able to be moved that up to the second spot i think it gives us two power spots there two power hitters in that two three and four and I think I like this potential here. And David Bodie, what a debut. He had two for five. And we definitely need to clean up the pitching, that's for sure. And I used some new, I used the def default sliders here in this game. So I didn't like how many home runs there were. So I definitely will uh, use some slider sets from Operation Sports, which I used in the Vancouver uh, portion there in the Vancouver first four episodes. So we will see how this team will develop. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, more Lion Kings franchise coming to you. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I be trying to do me, but they be trying to copy though. Only problem with that is they not me though. People act cool, but really they be shy though. They say they got your back, but they ain't even behind me though. I be low key, but police be trying to find me.